lights, camera, traction. Exactly. So you guys knew the, the student groups, you guys knew the faculties, you guys knew sort of the, the, the flavor of that mm -hmm. particular university, not just all universities, but the specifics of that universities. Uh, you might have even known, you know, who led certain departments, had sure. access to email addresses that other people might not, whatever. But like, what do you think was the really the real thing that gave you an unfair advantage because to me as an outsider, it seemed like it was your connections to the student body. Mm. Would you agree? Would you disagree? Well, I think so much has to do with credibility, right? If you're going to talk about a, a student product, it helps if you're a student, right? If we're talking to administrators, like this is how you're going to be able to help and engage students. And we know this because these are pain points we've been through. Uh, is going to lend a lot more credibility if you don't have that experience. And then it also helps us when designing the app is we know what we'll interact with and what we won't interact with. Um, the biggest problem we found, uh, well, I guess the unfair advantage is the industry of ed tech is, is very different than a lot of other industries because a lot of the programs and, and software that uh, uh, university students have to use on a daily basis isn't made with like a kind of a regular free market style of like building products they're built through a request for proposals where they're they're essentially cobbled together via committee and you end up with a lot of really strange outcomes that way that are are difficult to use in, in many instances and now some universities have phenomenal websites but i think a lot of students will agree with me that their majority of university websites are exceptionally difficult to navigate and not really user friendly and we had this idea this focus from the get go that everything needs to be uh, user experience orientated for students because if you can capture their attention and their engagement and get them to interact uh, well on the platform all the other benefits and information and things that the university wants uh, will come from that but if you can't get them to use the app and enjoy using the app uh, then you can't build anything else on top of it so yeah, so basically, it was about building that foundation. In order to have a happy, so you got the first customer, but in order to ultimately make them happy and mm -hmm. to do a study to get customer number two, whether it was another faculty at the University of Manitoba or another school, you needed users, right? Absolutely. So, do you guys remember what was what were the first few things you did to get users? I remember you guys did some crazy stuff with stickers. Do you remember? Oh, we did a lot of stunts. So we knew there's things that work with students and there's things that really don't work with students. Now everybody and their mother puts up posters and we were very anti poster because we thought like the whole point of this is that posters don't get the message across anyway. Right. right. Like I see your, your poster for like the youth Christian horseback riders club. I'm like, that's great for four students. Right. But for the rest of us, it's just another thing in the way stopping me from seeing what I actually want to see. Right. So it's, uh, we wanted to find ways to kind of cut through a lot of that noise and get everybody involved. Now, anybody will tell you the, the best way to do this is, is going to be word of mouth is the best way. And the majority of our usership grew organically. But before you're able to kind of get that rolling, you got to build up a bit of a user base. So all of our ideas were how to kickstart different things like this. Um, and the first thing we did is we, we just set up booths in hallways and campuses where the team would go down. We had little post-ed baseball caps made. Uh, we printed a ton of stickers. And uh, we actually made business cards that just described post-ed and uh, what the app was, how you use it, where to get it. How, this is what it's called. Download it here. It does this thing for you. And uh, we would go on campus and talk to just as many students as possible and handed out these cards which I uh, don't think the custodial staff liked because a lot of people didn't put them away properly uh, at first, at first. And then we uh, upped the ante with that where we, we opened an Instagram account and started doing some of that marketing. But to get it a little more engaging was we had a, a sticker contest. And the idea was if you put a post-ed sticker, uh, the best picture of a post-ed sticker up somewhere on campus, 
uh, gets like 500 bucks or whatever it was. And we yeah. gave people a month and as many stickers as possible to go and get the best sticker shot. And people, people went a little nuts for, for a while. Uh, the, the picture submissions were cool at first. And then people started doing a lot of videos and those got a little crazy where you had people climbing up like the sides of parkades to stick like stickers in places that really shouldn't be reachable, which we were blown away by. But the guy who ended up winning created an, an entirely new Instagram account called post ed pick me where it was like 30 or so like pictures and videos of him going up and like spreading. There, my favorite was there was a video of him going up to regular students and using our pitch to get them to download uh, the app, just like fully doing the whole thing. Like we were at the booth wow. and uh, no, it was a really cool way to build a engagement and excitement about that. And people got into it and it was a really great way to build our initial base of users. Um, what, else, yeah. what else do we do? I know we did booths, stickers. Uh, we sponsored a few socials where uh, either you'd have to buy regular tickets or you could download uh, post ed and, and uh, because we were able to do ticket distribution through the app, uh, your ticket was free with your download. So uh, that was a great way to, to bolster so, some levels. And we just experimented a lot with ways to create and grow users. We tried to do anything that was a little outside the box. Yeah, and the fact that you guys were users, I think, was mm -hmm. just such an advantage, such a hack, such a mm -hmm. benefit, because you guys, you guys were part of that ecosystem. Like, very rarely are you selling something and you actually are the user. In many situations, you're familiar with the user. Mm -hmm. In many situations, you're familiar with the customer. But in very few situations, you are the user. And you guys were active users too. That's where I think mm -hmm. a lot of the unfair advantage comes from. You guys were involved in student groups. You guys were presidents of this, presidents of that. Sure. You guys were involved in creating this student experience before the app was there to support it. So I, I think that you guys benefited just from mm -hmm. having this extra knowledge that not any other student would have been able to do. You guys were like the, the, the cream of the crop in terms of your understanding of what makes the university tick for the student body. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I think a big part of it too is having the ability where the parts of the app that I didn't like at the time or whatever else, we knew other users wouldn't like either because it's a very, very similar use case where the parts of the app that I thought were amazing uh, our users also thought we're amazing because we're, we're in the same boat, right? We're, we're pitching to the, the same demographic. So it was uh, it just faster to get the information we needed. And also being students on campus, we're far more approachable and easier to talk to other students and be active. And a great part about the model was because clubs uh, and people who create programming on campus want people to see their events they were fairly easy to bring onto the app. And if they're going to put all the information up on the app, then everybody who attends their club already downloads the app to get informed about it. So there was a good trickle down kind of network effect that way, which was really useful.